Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I'm sure a lot of you noticed that I didn't post a vlog last week. Um, I had a little bit of a sore throat um, at the beginning of the week last week and it hadn't fully cleared. Um, it sort of it cleared by, by Saturday. Um, but like my, my days off last week, both my days off last week, um, it hadn't cleared by and I wasn't really feeling great so I didn't really feel like sitting down and filming but like as I mentioned before I'm gonna try and put my health a little bit first um, from now on so because I'd already sort of made that clear, um, although I felt a little bit bad for not doing it just for the sake of a sore throat at the same time, like I had a sore throat, uh, so my voice wasn't sounding particularly great, and it was much better for me, both mentally and physically, just to go, you know what, I'm not feeling very well, I'm not going to do it this week, and then, you know, see how we go from, from the following week. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why there wasn't one last week. Um, in terms of other things that have been going on... Um, so I've now reached the 18 week mark from when I was referred to the jaw specialist and although my jaw is in a period at the moment, I think primarily because of the warm weather, which again really heavily makes me suspect that this is probably arthritis. Um, I mean, I, that, that, like in my mind that's one of the most prominent reasons for the jaw pain. I can't say 100% it is the reason for the jaw pain until I seen someone and have been diagnosed uh, it could still just be a, as simple as a misalignment and in a lot of ways that would be better although the amount of damage that is being caused by that misalignment with this length of time going on considering how much pain it can be in it's not great <laughs> by the time i see someone i get the feeling it's going to be a worse problem than it should be regardless of what's causing it but that's the situation we're in Still, I have noticed that the warm weather has helped a lot. It's probably the only joint in my body that is preferring the warm weather at the moment. It's still nagging. It's still not 100% comfortable. Um, but in terms of like how much pain I was in last month to how much pain I am this month, um, I'm in a lot less pain this month. So, yay. Um, however, I am 18 weeks from when I was initially referred, pretty much to the day. Um, I still haven't heard anything from the specialist. So I phoned up this morning and was told, still a long waiting list. Um, still might be a little while, still can't tell you exactly how long it's going to be. And I'm like, I've already been waiting for a while. Like don't tell me it's still going to be a while it's like i've not phoned you up like two weeks later i phoned you up like several months later and you're still telling me that it's going to be a while but there's nothing i can do all i can do now is just wait and then hopefully they will contact me at some point um soon <laughs> but probably not soon it's probably still going to be a few a couple more months but as i said at the moment i'm pretty sure that the warm weather is reducing the worst of the pain which I'm not going to complain at. Um, I, as I said, I, it still nags. It's it's still not right. Um, but at least it's not the complete enough to agony it was last month. So I'm going to take <laughs> going to take it where it is, um, and not be too pressing about it at the moment. But I'm just going to have to see how it goes. Um, and yeah, it, it's one of those things that I really, 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 really want it to be seen sooner rather than later and this is not just a case of oh but i'm in a period at the moment where the pain isn't as bad as it has been yeah it's still nagging yeah it's still playing up yeah it's still not normal but it's not as bad as it has been so why am i still like feeling like i need to like press it and it is what i said before in that the longer this goes on untreated um the more likely it is to start causing damage to the joint um because it is a joint that does get used so much for so many different things it is a joint and it's it's a joint that once the damage is there there is very little they can do to repair that damage so me kind of going well it, it could still just be a misalignment but like that misalignment can cause damage 
or it could be arthritis and the longer that goes unrecognized the more likely that is to cause a lot of damage um i mean as i said i don't really know what it is i suspect because of the way it reacts to certain things but it, it's increasingly more likely to be arthritic but at the same time i really don't want that because the misalignment is going to be easier to sort even if there is extra damage being caused by the fact that i've not been seen soon enough but like either way the longer that i'm waiting the more likely it is that yeah, it, there's going to be some long-lasting damage to the joint. Um, but there, like, there is nothing I can do about that. I'm already waiting for the specialist. I don't currently have a dentist, um, so I can't just sort of like go in and go, hey, can I just get some dental X-rays and can you just like look at my jaw and see what's going on there? I mean, that would be expensive anyway. Um, so I said, I'm not, I'm not registered with a dentist, so I'm certainly not registered with an NHS dentist. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm in a situation where I can't really do anything, um, I do just have to wait on the specialist and in the meantime just hope that I'm not doing so much damage that, like, I, like, it, it's really bad by the time I get there, um, and at the same time I'm also kind of like, alright, um, this, this is what it is, um, I'm in a period at the moment where probably due to the warm weather it's not as irritated as it has been I'm going to take advantage of that um, there are like things that I need to be doing and getting on with at the moment that are much easier when I can actually talk um, so like I said I'm playing it by ear a lot I'm making sure that I'm not getting excessive with anything and I am sort of like keeping an eye on things as I said like I can feel when it's irritated and it's irritated by me doing this um, I can also hear that I still have like the tail end of my sore throat slash cold <laughs> which is great um, but compared to like how I sounded like the two days I had off last week um, that wasn't a Saturday because I have three days off a week and I'm not counting the Saturday because I decided not to do it on the Saturday <laughs> just just to give myself an extra day of rest um, but yeah, I can, I can still hear I've got like at the tail end of that cold, but that could also just be combined with my, my jaw stuff anyway. Um, I mean, I know I've still got the tail end of the cold, um, so it's probably more likely the, the tail end of the cold, but it's also probably being exasperated by the jaw, but I can sort of like, I can hear my voice a little bit, so <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say there. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it, I'm, it's just a situation I'm in at the moment and there's, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. It was a little bit, like, frustrating when I phoned up this morning and they were like, you know, it's still going to be a while wait. And I'm like, well, the, the letter you, you sent out saying that, you know, they had my you had my referral and that I was on the waiting list said, like, 18 weeks and it's 18 weeks now. And that's why I'm calling. And they're like, yeah, no, that information's been wrong for a while and, like, why are you still sending it out then? If that information is wrong, don't send it out with that information on it. Send it out with a, we cannot say how long this wait is going to be. And I know, I know you do send letters out like that, NHS, because this is not the only clinic that I am waiting on. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's very much that sort of situation and it's a little bit sort of frustrating <laughs> for that reason. Um, so yeah, it's like, like, of course I was going to phone up, like, at, at the 18 week mark, because you've told me that it's a, like an 18 week wait, and that's the information I have, like, why wouldn't I go with that information if you weren't sure how long it was going to be, take that information off of, like, what you're sending out, like, send it out with that information on, as I said, this is not the only clinic that I'm waiting on, and I know the only other clinic is going to be a much longer wait, without even, like, like, at the point in time I was referred, I knew it was going to be a much longer wait because I know how that kind of works. Um, but at least I had the decency when they sent information out, saying you were on the waiting list, to say, we cannot say for certain how long the wait is going to be. Like, I appreciate that. I appreciate that it's going to be a long wait. I know that's going to be a long wait. I prepared for that to be a long wait. 18 weeks was a long enough wait for something when you're in pain, and I have experienced a lot of pain with my jaw in those 18 weeks, so for me to be reach that 18 week mark, having not heard anything, having not had the information updated, to still be told, yeah, it's still going to be a while, is very frustrating. 
So um, I'm a little bit sort of frustrated with the NHS this morning. <laughs> and I know it's not their fault. I know like overworked, underfunded departments plus COVID plus a lot of other things. Like, but at the same time, if you're sending information out to patients that have a limit of time that they can expect to be waiting for something, don't be so dismissive when they phone you up at that point. <laughs> so I think that's probably what annoyed me more than anything else is the receptionist that I spoke to was so dismissive about it um, to the point where it's kind of like, yeah, what do you expect? Well, there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm kind of like, well, yeah, fine. <laughs> At least be like apologetic and kind of go, oh, like, sorry that, you know, the letters that were sent out to you probably have misprint or, but no, you basically just told me you're still sending out information that is incorrect and you should not be doing that. That is not fair on your patients who are waiting and are probably, you know, suffering just as much as I've been suffering. That's, you know, it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem fair. Like that seems like a problem you should have sorted or fixed at some point, but you've made it sound like it's not an issue that you're sending out misinformation and that kind of, you know, frustrates me a bit. And as I said, essentially it was a receptionist was a little bit dismissive when she was talking as well. So I was, yeah, it was, it was just one of those. Just one of those situations um, that sort of kind of frustrated me about the call this morning. It was a very short call. And I probably should have gone, oh, hey, by the way, I've also updated my name. Can I update your records, please? But I think that's better done, like, in person. Like, like I've been planning to bring my documents with me. <laughs> um, like, when they say update your details, it's usually, like, contact details and not necessarily worrying about anything else. Um, as I know with the NHS, you have to uh, update, like, you have to take the information to the various clinics if you're with clinics and I'm like they don't need the the poll and I don't want to have to post stuff <laughs> I don't want to have to post stuff um so I'm just gonna you know when I when I eventually get my first appointment and I go in I'm just gonna take it with me and go okay psh, update my records please um uh, or I might get surprised and my GP might have updated it like sent the information out for me I doubt it um just from what like I've been made aware of it, like you I think you have to like update each clinic yourself but again it's very it's very difficult to do that when like the, like the clinic is not just like down the road from me <laughs> I would have to like find addresses and like send stuff and then like make sure everything's been updated correctly and it's like it's much easier just to do it in person like at the time I have my first appointment rather than to have to worry um, too much about it now I mean it's not ideal but it is a situation that it is and uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it right now especially because like I was already kind of frustrated and irritated with the receptionist during that phone call so I was like I don't I don't really want to like bother her too much more because clearly she doesn't have the time for this conversation um <laughs> yeah um so yeah that's I guess this is another jaw update video which I didn't initially sort of intend to do but um it is what it is and as I said it's one of those situations where I'm definitely a little frustrated definitely a little frustrated um, with how things have sort of played out with it this morning because um, I, like I said like I I'm fine with it being a longer wait what I'm not fine with is a the dismissive nature of the receptionist when I call um, and B, the fact that she basically admitted they were still sending out incorrect information, at least at the time that I received the letter, and they were aware that it was misinformation at the time that I received the letter. And by her implications, they're still sending out misinformation about it. That kind of irritates me because speaking as somebody who has experienced a lot of pain with, you know, my jaw over the last few weeks, and I'm someone who, you know, I... I understand pain in a way that a lot of people don't because of the chronic pain conditions that I have I could only imagine how much more frustrating it would be for somebody else 
who is a not used to waiting on clinics i'm also used to waiting on clinics at this point because various health things that have gone on um and b um they're not uh, they're, they're they're in the same a similar levels or more discomfort to what i've experienced i can't even imagine how irritated they would be if they also got that 18 weeks waiting time and it's not even 18 weeks and then you'll get an appointment it's 18 weeks within which you should be seen is how the information is written so sending that out as incorrect information and knowingly sending that out as incorrect information is very frustrating um as i said for me personally because like that was the information i had to work with like no correction was sent out no, nothing has been sent out since that point like i and again i wouldn't have minded like receiving like an update letter saying oh by the way waiting times are going to be slightly longer we apologize for this blah 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 blah, blah. the fact that i've had nothing in that period of time at all um yeah then being spoken to in a very dismissive way like it's no big deal and it's like yeah you have no idea how much pain i've been in <laughs> on and off through the last few months so don't just like act like it's not a big deal because like i'm going to be fine or, like I'm, I'm gonna not make a big deal out of this for you but i can imagine other people getting very irritated very irritated at that so yeah 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 um all right okay so i hope you found this still in sort of interesting um i apologize that again i still sound like i've got a bit of a cold because i probably do still have a bit of a cold definitely can still have a bit of a cold um sorry that it was sort of ranty and dual related once again although this time more to the system rather than to do with uh anything else at the actual pain <laughs> um hopefully i will have something a bit more interesting to talk about next time and i will see you next time see ya <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video consider checking out some of my others and if you like what you see consider liking and subscribing thanks for watching see ya